Hi, and welcome to the channel. My name is Ray, and this is Ray Whitby Creations. In this video, we're going to attempt to cut wood, real wood, with the Niji E40 laser. So stay tuned and see if a laser like this can go through a stack of 80 mil wood like this. This video is not focusing on the unboxing and installation, but testing the appropriateness of the Niji E40 laser for woodworking and woodcraft. Niji provided this laser for review on the back of a previous video where I was using transparent pattern plywood to make an electric guitar. So I guess the intention is that I will try to test the cutting performance of the Niji 3 Max for a large scale project. Now I've never owned a laser, so this series of videos will be from a beginner's perspective. But by the end of the first video, I hope to demonstrate that even a beginner can produce some detailed and beautiful looking woodcraft. The instructions provided with the kit, and even those on their wiki page, could leave a beginner scratching their heads. So I recommend you follow this link, which is also in the description below, for a visual installation guide. The assembly is fairly straightforward, but there was an accessory that needed a few extra holes to be drilled in the mounting bracket for better alignment, but nothing onerous. Everything does lock into place and bolts together neatly, although sliding the wiring and piping inside the drag chain was a bit hit and miss. Oh, and you're definitely going to need a spoil board. I went through some basic engraving of wood, acrylic and glass, and it's easy to set up with the Niji E40 laser module. It can actually get through these images very quickly. I was quite impressed with the quality of the images that were obtained, though unsurprisingly it does take time to find the right settings. Engraving acrylic and glass is easily done as long as you use a mask. I did find the Niji software a little too basic when I wanted to engrave or cut in several stages. I did try laser GRBL but finally went for Lightburn, which is compatible with the Niji 3 Max system you do have to add in the GCO commands for air assist and emergency stop, and also ensure the S parameters match. But now I need to know, can the Niji E40 cut 80mm wood? Real wood. This is not the laser module for deep cutting, but reviews said it could go up to 15mm deep, and this made it useful for some upcoming projects. The types of wood that I chose were MDF, plywood, spruce, Scots pine, beech, oak, and utility, which is poor man's mahogany. But first up was this spruce, and it didn't cut effectively, even after multiple passes. The Niji help desk were brilliant, and they found the issue, a dirty protective lens from all the engraving without an air assist. It was easy to take apart and clean, but a little bit fiddly when reassembling the air hose attachment to the base of the laser module, which is probably due to me having large fingers. But once cleaned up and reassembled, I could then cut wood. Yes, real wood. For whatever reason, I decided to cut the utility wood next. And this was done with one, three, and five passes at 100% power and 100 millimeters per minute. Now I know they're not optimal settings for cutting wood, but a good starting place. Each stage was separated by five millimeters but this turned out to be too short. And this is the reason why you cannot leave a project alone. You'll certainly need adequate ventilation, ideally a fume extraction system. Nonetheless, the cutting lines were separated, then I ran the comparison tests. For oak, I got some very clean cut lines with minimal scorching, possibly due to using European oak rather than English oak. With a feeler gauge, I was able to measure the depth of each cut. Now, of course, I should have done this for each type of wood in triplicate, um, but this is a rough and ready test which showed that oak gave one of the deepest cuts after five passes. MDF had the deepest cut overall, but it also came with a lot of scorching along the length, and it left the sample with gaping holes and white gaps, so you definitely need to be restrained with the power settings. For plywood I tried going across and also down the layers 
and this either left scorched spots or quite large craters. The wood orientation and glue obviously had a major impact of the quality of the final cut. For spruce, it cut quite cleanly, whereas the Scots pine left some artifacts after the cuts, which was probably due to the resin content, which also affected the final depth of the cut. Beech yielded clean cuts, whereas the utility left scorching plumes partway down the cut. And after the final passes, you can see a wide gap in the utility wood. It also gave the shortest depth of cut in the test series. Of course, these are not standardized tests, but should give you an idea of how wood responds to the laser. I tried test cuts to leave the thinnest straight strips in four millimeter thick utility and spruce. Uh, I did also try it with circular lines, but they became problematic. The air assist, which was a necessary feature for the cleaner cuts, ripped off the thinner strips in places. So the smallest I've achieved so far was 0.2 millimeters, which was stable with the grain, but not when cutting across it. Nonetheless, I think this shows some great capability of the Niji 3 Max system, especially the stability of the track motors. I then set up some cutting projects using 4mm thick utility wood and spruce, using the trace function of an image and the outline, which was then cut with 2-3 passes using 80% power at 400mm per minute. For the infill, an outward kerf is applied to the cutting of the spruce to get a tight fit of the pieces in the utility wood. No glue was needed. I was particularly fond of this yin yang dragon design by Benny He. The E40 laser provides very clean cuts throughout small, complex patterns, and the intricate detail is not really achievable with a CNC router, so it makes the laser cutter a potentially useful tool, though having charring of the wood in the final finish may not be desirable. At least you can turn your back on a CNC router. The Niji system was able to cut out the eyes for a perfect inlay of an inlay. And this was my personal favourite of the series I've tried. Off camera, I cut these pieces into squares and mounted them onto a pine cube to better display them at the end of the video. Now I know that the final effect of these can also be achieved using lasers with veneers, so basically marquetry but my interests are for cutting larger blocks over larger areas, so this will be featured in future projects. Why not let me know which cutout pattern you prefer in the comments below, and maybe suggest some ideas. From some of the searching I've done for laser cutting, one project that really caught my eye was of an ostrich egg on a rotary device with a laser cutter, and I highly recommend you have a look at this video. Once you've finished watching this one, of course. My thoughts of the Niji 3 Max and the E40 laser are so far hugely positive, even though I haven't used the full working area of the system. Between the Niji system and the Lightburn software, I was able to produce complex block inlays with neat fitting, and this was really after only a couple of hours of testing the system with no prior experience. But of course I'll need to continue testing the performance in upcoming videos. One question I will be asking myself is whether I would buy this machine. And based on what I've done so far and its potential capabilities, then yes, I would, even if it was only to play with. But one should seek a more technical appraisal and comparison of other performance reviews. I hope you found this video useful and it would be great if you could click on the like and subscribe buttons and also hit the notification icon for upcoming videos in this series. Thanks so much for watching and catch you next time.